everyone, it's Charlotte, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming a super exciting video. This is my favourite LGBTQIA plus novels that I have ever, ever read. So I was trying to think of potentially what is bringing all of these books that I'm going to talk to you about together. And uh, they're sharing some similar themes. There's normally a romance plotline, there's normally some sort of coming of age trope. Um, Sometimes they're taking me to corners of the globe that I've never been to before or that I have been to before but explore it in a different way or a new way and so um, yeah there are some similarities I think and of course the thing they all share is that I really enjoyed their writing, I really enjoyed the plot, the characterisation um, and so the, this is representing um, works of fiction that I just really really enjoy the reading experience of. So we're starting off with Shuggy Bane and I feel like I'm not going to say too much about what this is about because I feel like everyone has either heard of this book, read this book um, or has been living under a rock. So um, Shuggy Bane, I think I got on with that book so well because of its setting. I've never been to Glasgow, I've never experienced that level of poverty. For me it was um, very difficult to get into initially because I just absolutely hated, I think that's the right word, the parents. I just felt, uh, obviously they're both dealing with their own issues, but in terms of um, the, d the dad figure, I thought he was just awful as a dad, a father, a husband, all round, just terrible. Um, and then obviously the mother who had her own issues, but that had a knock on impact onto her children and how well she cared for them. And so... Um, I just found myself very angry at the whole situation, which I guess is kind of what it's trying to do, because this is an unjust situation. These are vulnerable children who are not getting any kind of attention or help that they need um, from society or their own parents even. Uh, so, um, yeah, it is a difficult book, but I think when you get into it and you find the heart of it, which I think comes at around the 120 page mark for me I really sunk into it and got invested I think that's really when it comes into its own and um, really it was a ex reading experience that I still remember to this day so the mercies by Kieran Millwood Hargrove is the next one on this list again I feel like a lot of people have read this but we are essentially blending uh, historical fiction with a little bit of magical realism in this book because there's been a storm and all the men um, in this Norwegian um, 1600s town have died and so that leaves the women to set up their um, social system, their political system, um, how they're all going to be able to speak and have a say and so um, but and it's working wonderfully until um, the powers that be hear of this and put this sort of male figure and his um, young wife that he brings along with him in charge to sort of banish um, the witches because the whole place is suspected of witchcraft um, as a result of what's happened and so uh, it's essentially um, it essentially boils down to a love story between this young wife and one of the other female villagers um, and I thoroughly enjoy the whole thing I know gosh, that's a very loud bird <laughs> um, it's not faultless by any means and I feel like the Goodreads reviews you do get a sense of um, the light and shade of this. Not everyone is giving a glowing recommendation of this novel but it really is one that stays with me. I love any books that are sort of dark and have that wintry feel to them. Yeah I really like that wintry atmosphere and um, even down to the d domesticity so um, learning about what the women are cooking and how they're preserving food and um, bread, making bread and butter and all of these sort of homely domesticated things that I've never had to do before um, but I really want to be doing um, so uh, in terms of um, you know s storing food and making my own food and I think that sounds really fun and really interesting so um, yeah that, that whole atmosphere was just a pleasure to immerse myself in for that length of time. Now Brickmakers, this next book on this list, is a very hard-hitting emotional book. This is essentially we are in Latin America and we have two boys who are at loggerheads with each other in the community um, and it's because we have two feuding families um, 
but in a sort of Romeo and Juliet style, but make it gay, there are two boys on the opposite sides of the uh, kind of line from each other who are in love. And so uh, it all escalates from there. Um, no one finds out about the romance, but it's, it's constantly surrounded in this Latin American heat. It is a very damning indictment, as you can probably imagine, on toxic masculinity, uh, not being able to talk, um, having to uh, fight for uh, dominance and um, authority, um, and also the women that are caught up in this violence as well. Plot-wise it's very interesting because it's combining uh, magical realist elements um, and so at one point there's the ghost of a father who comes back to see someone um, and then stylistically we are kind of propelled through the plot by the writing. It's very fast-paced leading up to this sort of ending where we're to an ending where we think gosh what a waste for all of the lives that have been lost for, during this kind of uh, feud and um, how it really leaves you with the message of what next something has to be done about this how is society going to progress forward um so it's a it's definitely a deep one it's emotional it's heavy um and it's going to pack a punch now i don't think this list would be complete without the songs of achilles um i thought this was uh, taking it way back to uh, the ancient times um uh, achilles and patroclus uh, i mean you, i don't think there is um, a more famous ancient world uh, romantic duo than these two, unless we're talking maybe Helen of Troy, but um, and uh, Paris or Menelaus, her actual husband. So um, yes, I think that that in terms of um, retelling um, ancient Greek myths, no one does it better than Madeline Miller. Um, I think Circe was also a fantastic Greek myth retelling. But as we're talking about songs of Achilles today. I thought that it was just so emotional and it follows the boys from childhood as they go off to, um, as, as a lot of um, these Greek myths do, they send their young boys away to learn from a mentor, often in a remote uh, environment where they learn um, skills that they'll need for life, whether it's fighting, hunting, that sort of thing, um, and so uh, reading as well. So. Um, so yes, it was a wonderful exploration of um, the Greek countryside, because obviously for the majority of their life, Achilles and Patroclus are growing up, enjoying each other's company. I mean, they are very much coming of age, they're very much young boys, having the time of their life running around eating olives and, you know, going in waterfalls and hiking and, and hunting, and it's, it's, it's lovely. And there's no, um, and obviously because they're so young, there's no romantic element to it at that point. They're just absolutely it's a beautiful friendship um, and then um, Achilles basically has to go off to war because that's his that's what he's been destined to do Patroclus goes with him it was well known that Patroclus was his lover like he was kept in Achilles tent um, it was you know it was not hidden in any way that was refreshing that we weren't getting another hidden um, LGBT love story it was a very open one and I think that's lovely to portray and to read on as well on the page um, and even though it is set you know thousands of years ago I felt like it was um, very real very fleshed out as, as I say Madeline Miller does an excellent job of crafting her stories and so it really did flow seamlessly the writing is really enjoyable to read and so um, this one is another winner this next book is for anyone who is after a challenge um, in their reading, and that is The Adventures of China Iron. This one is essentially exploring the gaucho community in Argentina, but it is the style of the narrative that makes it so tricky. Um, it is quirky to say the least, there, it, it bounces a lot, so it's, it's very uh, fractured in its writing style. Um, it's linear in a sense, but as I say, it feels very truncated uh, which is it which can be part of the enjoyment if you know what you're getting into and that's what you've signed up for but it also can put people off so we are following um, two characters um, a, a father and a daughter and um, it's kind of about how their their community is under threat um, and they are traveling around as a result um, the gaucho community is uh, kind of very hyper masculine and so everything that you would associate with hyper masculinity is involved in this novel so yes i would 
tread carefully. The chapters are short, but it's a challenging read because nothing is fully explained or developed, and so often it can feel quite confusing. Either you will love or you will hate this book, but if this kind of if this challenge is appealing to you in any way, I would say go for it. Now, the next book is one of my favourites on this list. This is Miss Iceland, and this is um, about three misfits in 1960s Iceland, who, uh, one of whom is Hecla, our main protagonist. She is a um, writer um, and a lover and an artist, and we follow her friend as well, because it's told by three characters. Her friend is a very young um, and new wife and mother, and she's really struggling to adapt to this new role in her life, find, find the identity that she now has lost, uh, her old identity, and she finds that through writing. And then the third friend of Heckler's that we follow, rather the second friend of Heckler's, but the third character that we follow, is a gay man called John John, who is a sailor, and so he's constantly living with that threat and that malice of, of um, his kind of fellow colleagues, and um, he but he's also at the same time, he is wanting the accessibility to public life that heterosexual couples have. He wants to be able to hold his lover's hand through the streets. He wants to go out to a cafe and um, give affectionate touches just in a nonchalant way like heterosexual couples could at the time. Um, and he just was absolutely craving that. And so, um, so this world that they're stuck in is beautifully... Um, there's a beautiful metaphor in the book about the local volcano erupting and the, it's created a new island as a result from the lava flow. Um, and the, uh, that metaphor then as an image of the, the new spaces that will be opening up for these um, marginalised um, people and the communities they represent. Um, new spaces will open up into society for them to be able to live the lives that they want to live and, and the identities that they want to um, embody. It is a really um, beautiful book. Uh, it was a total surprise to me because I thought with the title of Miss Iceland it was going to be about some sort of beauty pageant contest. No, not at all. It is beautifully written, beautifully plotted, beautifully paced. What more can we ask for as readers? True Biz is one of the most recent novels on this list that I've read. I read this back in January and this is about um, a deaf school um, where the, it is under threat because there is a lack of funding generally for schools but especially for special um, schools that are dealing with um, a unique set of children. We hear from several different um, narrators, one of whom is the head teacher of the school, and um, the second one is a deaf girl who is new to the school, and the third one is a um, deaf boy who has been there for quite some time and is the love interest of the deaf girl. The LGBTQ element in this is um, that the headmistress um, is a lesbian and there's no, you know, it's no hoo-ha about that, it's totally normal, like she, there's no big drama, they're literally just in a in a loving, supportive, lesbian relationship, totally, you know, <laughs> uh, it's, it's not, what I'm trying to say is, it's not made a fuss of or overly dramatised, it's just, it's just there, present, you know, that is her, um, that is her life, and so I thought that was, was beautiful in a way, because if the LGBT plotline is constantly one of struggle and oppression and a discrimination, it's almost, uh, quite, I can imagine that would be quite defeating, and so the fact that this is just a happy lesbian couple who nothing bad is happening to them, I think that is really quite refreshing uh, for people who do identify as this and, and don't want to constantly be reading literature where something awful is happening to, you know, the, the, the gay protagonist, that, well, that would be, I think, very defeating to read about all the time. So this one is wonderful, the the uh, writing is beautiful um, and I think that what makes this book truly special is that at the end of every chapter we get um, either a piece of uh, history about the, the deaf community or we get some signs, uh, some physical, you know, uh, visual symbols on the um, page of how to perform certain signs. I thought it was absolutely a fantastic idea, along with the fact that um, each chapter starts with 
the uh, hand sign for the letter of the first letter of that person's name that we're that we're seeing the world through because there's three of them. Um, I thought that was absolutely great as well. So um, this one is very, really refreshing. Uh, definitely one of my favourite books of 2022. Oh no, 2023 so far. And so um, yes, absolutely pick one this this one up. Now this last one I'm throwing in there for all the fantasy lovers. This is Bridget Collins' The Binding. I know this has um, been right up a lot of people's street and they've really enjoyed it. But we're in 19th century England and in this alternate universe, people can have their secrets and their bad things um, bound up in a book and forgotten about. So, um, And there are people called um, binders who perform this special job for society. Once someone's story has been bound up into a book, those memories for them have been forgotten and um, Emmett, our central protagonist, is such a binder until we he goes off to work as in the workshop and kind of be the apprentice to a binder because he's quite a young man until one day he finds out there's a book about him which I guess only can mean one thing. So with that, that brings me to the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching guys. Please leave your recommendations for this genre of video in the comments below so that we can all check them out and give each other some fantastic book recommendations for reading over the next couple of months. And with that, um, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in my next video guys. Have a lovely week. Bye!